Hey everybody, this is uh, Daniel Scott Murphy and I'm here to show you a tutorial on how to color grade your film in Resolve uh, based on a color selection process um, very similar to like Photoshop color selection, you know, which I, I really actually hate, you know, how uh, a lot of black and white videos are color selected just like there's one color, like a red rose or something like that. Just drives me crazy because that's something that used to be done all the time in the early 2000s, late 90s. Um, but you know, if you do it tastefully, um, cinematically, where you just make subtle adjustments, um, you can really elevate the production value of your film. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this is going to be a pretty simple tutorial. Um, what we have here is just a project in DaVinci Resolve. Currently, I'm using. Um, version 16. I know that 17 is out, but I have not uh, used it yet. I hear a lot of good things about it. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm sure a lot of this stuff will translate easily over to Resolve 17. So just to show you, um, I am currently in the color panel in DaVinci Resolve, and I have four nodes currently, and one of them is just basically my. Uh, here, let me just go ahead and deselect these real quick. So I have my raw import, and then I have the LUT added. It's actually a Zcam LUT that uh, is for my specific camera. And then I have added some de some contrast adjustments. And um, then I have one that I have made for the color. So it's got this kind of matrixy greenish monochrome uh, type of look here and i really like the image of it but one thing i would like to help stand out more is some of the neon signs here in the background i would like these to just uh, kind of bring back their color a little bit and just make the scene a little bit more interesting add a little bit more depth to the scene okay so one of the uh, first things i'm going to do here is add a new node and as you see there are several different nodes uh, the serial one is probably the one that's mostly used it's more of a kind of a linear uh, node that you would just add other adjustments onto your other nodes you have here uh, parallel and layer i know that parallel and layer are very similar honestly i don't know much about the parallel okay so um, i'm going to click on add layer and this is the, uh, the layer node which connects everything here. Um, and bring my contrast down here so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, and notice that the color, the, the one that I have on top, um, is, it's actually kind of flip-flop the way that DaVinci works, is that the layers that are on the bottom will show over the layers that are on the top of this node right here. Um, so if you wanted to switch that around. Here's your input there, input there. So now my green is on top, but the way that the mask works for what I want to achieve, I want the green in the background so I can easily select or cut out my mask on top of it. And you can, uh, reverse the mask or whatever, you know, um, to make this work the other way. But uh, for what I want to do, I want to do it this this way. This is just how I want to do it. And then uh, we'll get into, you can add other inputs through here. So if you right click on this layer node right here, you can add another input. So if you have multiple masks you want to control separately, um, you can do that here, um, but uh, for what I'm doing, I'm just going to create multi. I'm going to create two masks here and one here, and you can still control them individually through um, the mask editor, and I'll show you that later. But if you want more control, you can edit masks as individual layers. So I'm going to undo that. I just need my two inputs here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to switch over uh, to the window tab where I have uh, the ability to uh, select my mask here. And I'm gonna use the pen tool. You can use um, a lot of these other tools here, but for what I'm doing, the pen tool will work just fine. I'm going to increase 
my zoom to 200% and I'm going to start, hold on, why is this not working? Okay, I gotta select that, I'm gonna have to activate it first. Okay, all right. I'm just gonna select all the corners, then use my pen tool to create just a little subtle curve there. Drop it all the way down, over, up, create another little curve here. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna adjust the softness just a little bit. You can see that uh, the softness, you know, whatever you wanna call it, gets bigger and smaller as you adjust it. Um, what this is gonna do is it's gonna make my selection um, kind of fall into the background a little bit more smoother. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and select this to kind of see where I'm at. I think that I might need just a little bit more softness so I'm going to increase this to 1.5 I think that looks a little bit better um, and you can see already that this mask um, has selected only or is only displaying what I had masked around so let's go ahead and fit it okay now this looks a little bit too loud there so what I'm going to do is select my mask layer and then I'm going to change the opacity maybe down I still want to retain some of that color but I want it to kind of fade in to the background so I'm using opacity to kind of give that more natural fall in okay 47% is where it's at right now I think that looks good. It's, it's tasteful and it's not super in your face. Maybe it's maybe it's just a little bit too much, but I still want to retain some of that reddish glow that we have in there. And I think that um, if I were to decrease that saturation um, even more, it's just uh, it's just going to blend too much in the scene. I don't know. So let's go ahead and go on to our next. Um, Pen tool selection. I'm going to zoom in again to 200%. Oh, oh no, I need to select another pen tool here. So, what I'm going to do is um, hit the plus here, and it's going to give me another selection for this. Okay, so it allows me to create a separate selection from the one that I've already made. Okay, let's so drop down here. I'm going to go about halfway down around that curve, create a curve, boom. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to soften the edges up just a little bit. Done here. All right, then we're just going to connect that together. And the saturation for this layer, I mean, sorry, the opacity needs to be brought, brought back down uh, for this selection because this is controlled independently. So if I want to set this to 77% opacity, and then if I go to the other one, you can see that the opacity is, is different there. So you can separately control certain things. But if again, if you have more controls that you would like to control um, or take advantage of, you might want to, you, you can get more flexibility if you use Fusion. There's just more options there. But again, having this all in the color panel is just pretty amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna go back over here, drop this selection down to where it was somewhere to about 47 or so. Put it to the screen here. Okay, it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and just play it back here. Okay, I think it looks pretty nice. So just to recap, what we did here is add, we added a layer node. We did this by right-clicking on the color node. 
and then selecting add node, add layer. And what this did is it created a layer node right here, which then creates the serial node, which I used as a mask node. And this connects to my contrast node, which again was uh, previously created. So um, notice here that these are all just the green, I don't know what we call them, raster connections. We're not using any alpha connections here. You may want to use those if uh, you have something more tricky than I have uh, set up here. Um, also, keep in mind that you can add seri other um, inputs to your layer. Um, so you can basically essentially create multiple layers without creating another layer node as long as you're applying that to the same, I don't know, set. And so um, this is how I was able to selectively color my scene. And so I'm going to be using this a lot more. This is a very powerful tool and I um, hope you found it useful. And if you found it useful, just uh, like and subscribe or comment down below. All right, well guys, take it easy and I will talk to you guys later.